This video is protected by fair use. It's for educational purposes only, and it's not for profit. Hey everyone, we're going to be covering another NDE today, a near-death near death experience of a woman, and uh, some of it's kind of interesting and kind of different, and anyway, uh, you're going to see what I mean once I play it, so let's just jump right into it and let's get rolling. So in 2005, I was sitting out back on the back stairs behind my house and it started to rain. I'm talking on a cordless phone and I heard thunder and then a loud crack and the lightning bolt. I saw it come out of the sky and it hit my right arm. And after it did that, it passed through my body and it traveled underneath the house and it hit the transformer in front of our house. And when the lightning hit me, I felt this burning, searing, agonizing pain that lasted for only a minute, but it seemed like eternity. It was so painful. And then I live. Sorry to have to break in here, but is lightning God's design? Is it God's plan? Who came up with that? And for the people that say, well, it's us. We're the creators. We created this realm. We're creating reality. So she made the lightning strike herself is that what you're saying that's how illogical it says it sounds sorry that's how illogical that sounds it sounds extremely illogical too when people say that because you know there's millions of us that went through child abuse did we create that reality did we create our abuse i mean that's some of the worst victim blaming and nonsense imaginable it truly is you're, you're saying that we create our own reality. So there's so many millions of examples, literally not just a few examples, but millions of examples, living examples of people that would not have created that reality for themselves. Millions of examples. I can't list them all here because this is a near death experience video and I'd be talking for 40 minutes or an hour. There's so many examples of it. Start thinking, please. We suffer here not because we created that reality. I didn't create the child abuse that I went through or my sisters. I didn't do that. I didn't dream that up as a four-year-old, five-year-old, six-year-old, 10-year-old, 11, 12. You see what I'm saying? I shouldn't have to explain this to people, but I, I feel like I have to because people keep coming to my channel and some people keep directing me to channels where they're saying this that we created our own reality. Well, you're not looking at the whole reality and the whole realm. You're cherry picking the good stuff. Like, oh, I wish for this and it happened. What about child abuse? What about children with leukemia? Did they create that reality for themselves? How sick would you have to be to say that they did? Because I don't believe it for a second for you to put that on them. So it's not about us crying victim. It's about you blaming innocent people, which is really sick. I'm asking you to please think deeper than that. Stop blaming innocent children. That's really what you're doing with that quote theory. That's really what it boils down to. You're blaming innocent children that endure all kinds of horrible things in this realm. And they disprove your theory. They debunk it. They shatter it to pieces. This woman didn't create the the lightning that struck her arm. She didn't make that happen. In fact, I bet she was extremely surprised and horrified when it happened, when she saw that lightning hit her. All of a sudden, I'm peeling up out of my body, just peeling right up out of myself. And... I found myself going into the house, and at this time I did not know I was dead. So I'm walking through my house, and I'm in the kitchen, and I look around and everything has a burnt gold look to it. And as I'm looking around, I see the curtains on the windows by the sink, and I noticed that those curtains weren't my curtains. And 
I continued to look around and I noticed that the dining room furniture wasn't my furniture. And I was very confused at the moment. I had no idea that I was dead still. And I didn't know that was my house, but I didn't know whose furniture it was. I knew how to get around in the house. The rooms all looked the same, but the furniture was all different. And just about the time that I started to panic, there was this huge, huge, loving presence that was with me. And okay, sorry, I have to jump in here and I have to do this anyway, but I have th some things to say here. Um, that's, that's the interesting part that I found interesting and the reason why I decided to make a video on this particular one because everything was different in her house, but she knew it was her house. So was that another dimension? Was that like a Mandela effect sh uh, type shift? Um, it's very interesting. So there are connections between near-death experiences and the Mandela effect and uh, a lot of the other topics that we look into. And my channel is about showing those connections rather than avoiding them and just focusing on, oh, I'm just going to show you her NDE. And that's all they do. That's all that a lot of these channels do. They don't analyze anything and they don't make any connections. And that's what I'm here to do. Okay, I got sick of the surface level shit. And you should be too. You really should be. So, and the presence that showed up, this loving presence, that's the matrix stepping in. Whether that's an entity or whether that's an AI projection type thing, but it's there to deceive. You can count on that, okay? And the reason that this is important is if this something like this happens to you, eventually we're all going to leave here, leave our body. You got to be prepared for what steps in at those moments. You got to be ready for it and realize while you're here in this realm, oh, okay, shit comes in to deceive us regardless of what it is, regardless, that's what it's there for. So you don't have to sit there and try to figure out, hey, is this real? Is this a being? Is this a creature, an entity? Is this flesh and blood? Does it have a real body? Or is this an AI projection? In a way, it doesn't matter if you see what I'm saying. What matters is what you give your trust to or what you don't give your trust to. And what you do. And he filled me full of just the deep, deep sense of love and compassion. And I was no longer afraid. And we started moving very quickly sideways. We did not move up. We didn't move down. We went laterally. And we started moving very quickly through these beautiful pink and gold clouds and as we got to the end of the clouds there was this magnificent garden and just as we got to the entrance of the garden there were these two young men that stepped forward and at first i thought that they were angels because they were just literally glowing and then it hit me that it wasn't they weren't angels they were my two brothers who had died when they were babies and I was only a baby myself, so I didn't, you know, I'd never met them, but it was an instant knowing. And we had this wonderful family reunion with the hugs and the, you know, the tears. And it was, I was so happy to see them. And I. Sorry, I have to jump in. Um, isn't that sick to use that against her? Baby brothers that she lost. I mean, and some people watching my video, I already know. I already know you're going to say, well, that's not sick. That's beautiful. Those were her brothers. Well, then I'm going to say this to you. What's this woman doing back here in hell realm? If it's this beautiful heaven, heavenly place or real heaven where she met her real brothers, if those were really them and she was there, what's she doing back here again? How come she's here with us in this realm of suffering? I kept telling them that they look just like dad and that dad would be so proud of them. So as we were talking and, you know, hugging and having our reunion, we were walking further into the garden. And I noticed that I could feel the grass on my feet. 
and it was soft. The air was sweet and crisp and the colors were so rich and so vibrant. And then there were colors that I didn't even have names for. Jumping in just quickly, that's pretty common with the colors that you don't have names for, you've never seen or experienced here before. The grass, excuse me, and all that stuff. Um, the grass, uh, what was I going to say? I lost my train of thought there. Why would there be grass? Why would there be air, you know, that's sweet? Why would there be air at all? Why would you need oxygen? If you're not in a body, you don't have lungs anymore. <clears throat> this is the stuff that I wish people would question. They'll play hundreds of these videos on these channels, and they'll never... They do absolutely no analysis. All they do is say, it gives you hope that there's life after death. Well, they're all back here. That's the one thing, the common denominator. The one thing they all have in common. They might have smaller things in common of what they experience, but every near-death experiencer has one thing in common. They're all back here again in this hell realm of suffering. And almost nobody mentions that. And that's huge because it reveals that the place they're at was not good, was not really good, it was an illusion. Because if it was truly heaven, you'd never be sent back here again by anything loving. And as we're walking further into the garden, I noticed that there was a whole bunch of people that gathered around me and they were from all different time periods. Some of the women were in these beautiful gowns and some of the men were in fancy suits. And then there were other people that were dressed in different types of clothes. They were from all different time periods and I knew who they were and they knew me, but I didn't know where I knew them from. And everyone that I saw was glowing. They were literally glowing sort of from the inside out. And I didn't see anyone that was over the age of late 20s, early 30s. Um, there were no old people, no sick people, nobody crying, nobody in pain or suffering. As everybody was gathering around me, this huge loving presence that was beside me moved from beside me to behind me. And then my two brothers were one on either side of me. And then all these other people gathered around and it was time for my life review. It was like a screen had come down and I was watching this old fashioned movie on an old fashioned movie reel. I've actually heard of similar life reviews with the movie screen and old, maybe not old fashioned, but at least the movie screen, they've used this before. So they do reuse certain things. But also I wanted to jump in women dressed in gowns, men in clothing, and they're all glowing. What do they need clothing for? Who makes the clothing? Where do they, where do they get it from? Where do they buy it from? I mean, there's shops in heaven where you, you, you go, you, you know, a men, the men go to a shop to get suits and stuff. I mean, it's just, it's ridiculous. It struck me as ridiculous as a child. And yet all these years later, I'm talking about many decades later, I'm hearing grown people talk about, quote, heaven, with clothing as though it's just normal. I saw through this as a child. What's wrong with people? You know, I don't get that. Why would you be in clothing? Well, you got to have something to clothe your body. You're not a body. You're out of your body. You're a spirit. Doesn't add up. Doesn't add up. You got to snap out of that mind control if you're at that level trying to justify where the, why women are wearing gowns. It's not a material world. You're supposed to be in heaven. What are they, <laughs> where do they buy their shoes and their purses? I mean, it's just... <laughs> this stuff is ki as a kid, and I'm still asking these questions because, I'm, you know, every, almost every end of year, they, they don't question anything. It's just, it's, it's, uh, it's incredible. It really is. like a screen had come down and I was watching this old-fashioned 
movie on an old fashioned movie reel. And it was moving very quickly. And it was my life from the time I was a baby until the time I died that day in the backyard. And I watched it and it seemed like it was over really, really fast. And I had no sense of judgment. I had no sense of, of anything except I thought it was really short and I thought, wow, something's missing and my life must have been really boring because that was over very quick. I'd always been taught that there was judgment and that did not happen. There was no judgment. I was just loved so completely and I was so accepted and I had never experienced any of that before and it was just such huge love and so I learned God didn't judge me that huge loving presence that was behind me was what I, as I knew was God and then my brothers and all of those people they just loved me there wasn't anybody judging me or condemning okay so now she's saying that huge loving presence behind her was God well, how would you know that's God? That could be anything. You're kind of making a huge assumption there, aren't you, aren't you, lady? I mean, I'm not trying to be harsh with her and hard on her, but I'm hard on her. I mean, uh, whatever. I, I got to move forward here. I'm just, what can I say? Like, please don't do that, my people. When you When you're out of your body, don't assume that whatever big loving presence is God. I mean, you might want to deprogram yourself from the God program. There's a lot of people in this quote community that are stuck on that too. They have the God program and they, they won't get rid of it. Well, what loving God would create a, a realm of suffering like this? Do you understand? I mean, look around look where you are here. Forget about trying to figure out where to go when you, you know, uh, leave your body and you kick the bucket. You might want to figure out things here and say to yourself, wait a second, no loving God would design a realm like this. You know, you got to take that step first. Deming me or anything like that. And then I heard a male voice say, what you put out into the universe will come back to you. And I had never heard words like that before, so I didn't know what that meant. And there was a sense of, like I was hooked up to a giant IV bottle of knowledge. It was like having one aha moment after another. I was being infused with this divine wisdom and this knowledge at that point. And I was in shock over it. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. And I kept saying this, oh my God, you are so awesome. You're so cool. because. He was showing me who he was, what he was, how the universe was put together, and that it was all very simple. And we human beings make everything so complicated. And it wasn't complicated at all. And one of the... That's one of the themes in my videos is teaching people that they love what's simple. They really do. And it's not me hating humans. It's not saying... I want to depopulate or do all this stuff that there are people that come to my channel that are in favor of the new world order agendas. I'm not, okay? I'm not a human hater. But I do notice that the majority of people really, truly love what's simple. They do. If I dumbed down my writing and made my writing more simple and simplified everything, simplified my artwork, I could make a lot more money. I'm aware of this. I'm aware of this stuff. I'm aware of what people crave for the most part. The majority crave what's simple. They want what's simple. Because one thing they want to avoid doing is thinking. So if it's simple enough, they don't have to spend much energy thinking. It's not just mind power or time. It's energy. They don't want to spend any energy really doing any deep thinking. They want to avoid that at all costs. At all costs. And I do mean at all costs. I'm not exaggerating. If there were, if it was not a crime to kill people, they would do that to avoid thinking. I would have been murdered long ago by people that just were so triggered by me trying to provoke them to think that they would have. It would have just. They would have viewed it as easier. 
and they really don't have morality anyways. Most, uh, I won't say most, but a good percentage, a big percentage of humanity has no sense of true morals at all, no morality whatsoever, whatsoever. They demonstrate this. They did with the mask, with yelling at me to put on, put on your mask, your mask. You, you know, they, uh, they say it that way on purpose. That's for a reason. Not put on a mask or, you know, get a mask on your face, but put on your mask. I don't have one. I don't wear one, I said. They all yelled at me in stores like they have no, no sense of morality, the mob of humans. It's just true. They followed tyranny and they enforced it. It wasn't just police. No, poli no, no uh, police actually said to me during that whole time, put on a mask. It's ordinary people. So am I saying that I hate people? No, I'm not. Are they simple for the most part? Yeah, they are. They really are. They really are. And they seek simplicity to a degree that I really can't relate to. I can see what they're doing, but I don't seek it the way that they do. I tend to like complexity. I tend to like abstract ideas, abstract artwork. I mean, I'm called, you know, abstract angel artist. I don't just like the surface. I like, the, I like depth. I like deep thinkers. And people want what's simple. They want a simple answer as to what the universe is, what the meaning of life is, all that stuff. A simple answer will do. And these entities realize that. They're going to feed them simple answers, and it works. And they think it's brilliant, just like they do on YouTube channels, whether it's an entity feeding this woman simple, simple answers and saying it's all very simple, which her ears are tickled, and they love it. They love it. Not just her. Not picking on her. And there's people on channels like Quantum of Con Men that will call him brilliant all the time, and he says the most simple shit that you can imagine. And to most simple people, that is, quote, brilliant. All right, it's true. You can read the comments on his on his channel. Find out for yourself. Just go over there and do it. I can quote him, Matt McKinley. The meaning of life is life has meaning. I'll just reverse the order of the words, and it's it just sounds so profound. Hey guys, don't you just love when I do something really fucking simple, and you think it's profound and brilliant? <laughs> I mean, it works. You don't think the programmers of this world know what works? The ones here in this realm and the ones not in this, this realm? They're very aware of what works. Marketers are very aware of what works. Advertisers, they know what works. They know your psychology way better than you do. It's true. things that was shown to me was what those words what you put out into the universe will come back to you what that meant and the way he was kind of showing it to me was using a boomerang and so I call it the boomerang effect so what you say and what you think and what you what you do your actions go out into the universe it spins and gains momentum and get and uh, <laughs> I have to jump in here. So this is simple. It, it makes sense to her. But I've seen people that have been the, the kindest, most beautiful, gentle, innocent, loving souls that have just suffered horribly, horribly. Not just one event of suffering, just suffering for years and years. You get punished here for doing good. You get punished here for telling the truth. Because I do it all the time. And it comes, it, it boomerangs back to me as harm against me, and as demons attacking me. That's what happens. That's the real truth. Doesn't sound as nice, though, does it? There's sweet, innocent children, and they get, quote, rewarded with leukemia at eight years old, which is disgusting, but that's this realm. That's this fucking realm. There's sweet, innocent children that just want to protect their sisters and mother, and they get smashed in the head and smashed against the wall, and thrown across the, the room and, you know, hit, punched, kicked, beaten with a belt, hit with objects, you know, like a hockey stick or something, used in a sliding glass door that doesn't lock properly. properly. So you put that in the track to lock to, uh, as a means to lock it so you can't, someone can't just open the door. 
Just grab that hockey stick and just hit them with, hit a kid with that. All right? You know what I'm saying? Or uh, take an axe and, and they'll throw it at a kid. Is that coming back to them, the kindness and, and goodness that child put out? Or threatened with uh, being murdered in their sleep? And they're a child. They're a child. And that's the universe bringing it, boomeranging all that love back and that innocence and, you know, a good kid that cares about others. And they're just punished. Just punished. I don't think a lot of you understand. And some of you are so warped. You're so fucked up, man. <laughs> some of you even say, this one guy said to me, well, I didn't experience... Childhood abuse, so you're saying I can't understand? Well, when you're arguing stupid shit, you obviously don't understand. I'm not wishing that you, you can't go through the childhood abuse when you're an adult anyways, and, and, unless in your next life you're rolling the ru uh, roulette wheel if you want to be stupid and ignore everything on my channel and be a dumbass. Take your chances. In that recycling bin. Where's this lady that had all this wisdom Wisdom shown or told to her, injected into her like an like a IV. Where is she right now? I'm not saying this to be mean, but where the fuck is she? Add it up. Oh, okay. She's here with us. So how good were these beings and spirits that she was with? It's back here with us. Hey, lady. Can you please take an honest look at this realm at the suffering of others beyond you? I'm not being, I'm not, you know, I'm, I'm not against you. I don't hate you. I wish you well. I hope you do get out. I hope you see this video on my channel. On my just a small channel. Just a small channel. Hope you do. And I hope you open your mind. It's not as simple as what they told you. Okay? Some of it might even be a little bit complex. I hate to worry you. You might have to think about it. You might have to really bear down and use your mind, maybe for the first time in your life. Nothing personal against her. She's in the majority. There's many, many, many millions like her. Not, not, not me picking on her saying you might have to bear down and use your mind. I could walk outside my door and I could say that all along my street to anybody that I encounter. All right. For the most part, they don't have a clue where they are, what's going on here, that evil runs this place. They don't have a damn clue. Much less about death or before birth, where they were, who they were, any of that stuff, okay? It's just true. It's just true. So telling people to think is not hurting them or being mean. Ever heard the, the uh, term thought-provoking? Break it down. It's hyphenated. thought provoking provoking thought is provoking bad or can it sometimes save somebody from hell from staying stuck in hell i'm not claiming to be their savior it's up to them you got to choose that you got to choose to think which the new age vilifies of course demonizes don't think just feel see with your heart not with your eyes, not with your eyes. See with your heart, lady. <laughs> Sorry, I'm getting a bit silly. That's Chiron. That's not me. That's Chiron that says that shit. <laughs> it's bigger and stronger. And eventually that boomerang is going to come back and get you. So if you put out love and you put out kindness and compassion and acceptance and all of those wonderful things, and those are the things that will come back to you. But if you put out lying and stealing and cheating and, and all of those things, that's what's going to come and get you. That okay, I put out some kindness and generos generosity, lending a family member with no interest and no contract, no nothing legal signed, Many thousands of dollars, okay? It was over $10,000, right? For a down payment for a house. What did I get back? 
They're not in my life anymore. I had, to, I had to cut them out of my life, lady. That's one example. I could give you dozens of examples in my life and in the lives of friends that I've had that have told me stories and you know things I've witnessed and experienced. It really isn't as simple as what you're saying. It might be that way for what people label, quote, NPCs. And I don't like that term, but people say that, oh, they have it easy, and they do for the most part. They go through life with very little suffering, and they notice very little suffering of others for sure. If they notice suffering, it's only their own, only, exclusively. They can't see beyond themselves. So they can't really look at this realm as a whole and say, wait, it's not just me that's gone through a little bit of shit here and there. This is a realm of suffering. This whole realm is designed this way. They can't seem to do that. That's a huge limitation. And think of the recycling symbol. That's where it puts you, right back there again. If you can't see the suffering of this realm and the design, chances are you're going to get recycled. That was a, a life-changing lesson for me. When I came back, I realized I need to really be careful what I say, and I don't want to hurt anyone ever. And so I'm very careful about what I say and what I do. And then I continued looking around and it was like a, the most magnificent spring day. The, the sky was this beautiful blue. I noticed there was a sphere in the sky. It looked like the moon maybe, or the sun without any light because the light wasn't coming from a sun. The light was coming from God, the heart of God. And that's what I realized when I looked around, everything had this glow. Now, my brothers had, they were the ones that told me that I had died. And I thought, wow, okay, I can do this if with all this beauty and all this love and acceptance and, and everything. I thought, okay, I can do this. And I wasn't afraid. But when they told me I had died, I looked down the front of me and I could see my hair going down the front of me and I could see my clothes and I could see my feet. And I had a body. But it was a light body. It wasn't heavy or weighed down by the trauma of the world or gravity or anything like that. It was it was very light and very bright. And I was glowing just like everybody else was glowing. But I still had an identity. I was still me. Okay, so that's important. But um, she was wearing clothes and, and all that stuff. But um, she was glowing... They're still, are they still glowing, but you're here with us in a regular body now? I hate to point out the obvious repeatedly, but you are, right? So her, she had an identity, was still her. So Howdy pushes, Howdy Duty, Howdy Mikoski or whatever his name is. I call him Howdy Duty. It's Howdy Duty time. He pushes the idea that we don't have the same personality over there. And we kind of lose who we are. But all these near-death experiencers say that, you know, we maintain our identity, our selfhood, our individuality. And I tend to believe that, yes, we do. And that makes perfect sense. And any other stuff does not make sense. I just wanted to point that out so that you kind of key in on that. These people that are, we're all one. You're wrong. You're wrong here and you're wrong beyond this realm. We're not all one. We're not all one thing. I am not you. You are not me. Never will be. I'm not the same. And some of you say we're the same. Or I'm, they say they're the same as a grapist. No, we're not. No, that's wrong. That's mind control. That's programming. And that's toxic. It's damaging. I thought like me. I felt like me. I looked like me, only a better version. We just kept walking through the garden and I noticed this beautiful, what I call the glorious city. And it was kind of off in the distance to the left a little bit from where I was standing. And there was this golden wall that surrounded the city. And that must have been the barrier. You know, I couldn't go beyond that point. And I saw buildings on the outskirts of the city and they were made of the most beautiful alabaster, this white marble, and you very intricately 
carved and there were archways and columns. I saw a place where babies and children go. Oh, isn't that just beautiful? Just wonderful. What? Why would we need buildings or cities or Roman columns, you know, marble columns? Really? Why? What for? We're spirits. We don't even have bodies. I mean, well, she said spirit bodies of light, but I mean, not bodies like these flesh and flesh and blood, flesh and bone. See what I'm saying? What What would the what would the buildings be for in the city? Like, believe me, this is very common. I got to point that out. She's not the only one speak. Hundreds, if not thousands and thousands, speak about this. But why? It's not a material realm, so what made these? And what are they really made out of? I don't care if they look like marble or stone, some kind of stone. What are they made out of? What's, what's the purpose? What's the reason? Just to dupe people? To feel more comfortable? Hey, there's still buildings, still cities. when they die and there were i saw children and there were various ages and stages and they were running around laughing and playing and they are cared for by people who have passed on before them you know relatives and then i saw another building and it kind of looked like a maybe a spiritual hospital of some sort but Outside of this particular building, there were healing pools, pools of, of what looked like living water. It was for people who had died traumatic deaths or victims or, you know, people who died very quickly. And I saw this other building and it looked like this magnificent library. It was full of books from the ceiling to the floor. Just a bazillion books on every side. Got my books, got my books. <laughs> Sorry I had to do that, but uh, that's that's Jason from Archaics. The, um, <laughs> why, why would the children as spirits still be at the age of children mentally? I thought that was more of a human thing, but uh, it's a little bit strange, isn't it? Subject you could possibly want to know. And the inside of that building looked like it had this deep, rich mahogany bookshelves and ladders that you could move around, that you could climb up to get the books on the top. I mean, they were just, it was huge. And I called it the Hall of Knowledge, but I'm not sure if that's what it was really called. And then my brothers and I continued walking and there was a grove of trees over in the corner. People ask me all the time, what were those trees? And I don't know what kind of trees they were. So I just want to jump in here because I had some thoughts. So a library building or a Hall of Knowledge, as she named it, um, bookshelves, mahogany bookshelves, physical books, bound and printed, printed books with paper. Okay. Um, <coughs> oh, excuse me. So you're going to be in this light body holding books and reading books. I want to know how physical this realm is that she's describing. Do people have to go to the bathroom? Do you have to shower still? You have to shower and wash your, your spirit body, your light body. I mean, do you have to wash your clothes? Do you have to do laundry? Do we still have to do laundry? Are there, are there laundromats there? I'm, I know it sounds funny and silly, but seriously, if there's bookshelves made out of mahogany wood and books that are physical books, like what the hell? And trees and all this stuff and grass. and See what I'm saying? I hope you see what I'm saying. It doesn't really sound like a spiritual realm to me. So some of you are probably almost jumping out of your seats. You calling this lady a liar? No, I think she's telling the truth about what she remembers experiencing. 
But I think she's been massively deceived. And that's part of what this, what the quote truth community doesn't like to hear is that anybody's been massively deceived. This fucking realm works on deceptions, in case you haven't understood that yet. It works on deceptions, lies, conspiracies, manipulation, mind control, psyops, agendas. That's how this fucking place works. Were, but I saw Jesus coming out of the grove of trees oh, and he walked up to me. And when he walked up to me, my two brothers disappeared. Oh, I Jesus. have no idea where they went. And so he smiled at me and I was just in awe of him. He was so beautiful. And he said to me, and this was my first clue that I was going to be sent back, but it went over my head. I didn't pick up on it, but he said to me, I love you. I'm with you don't be afraid and then he walked with me over to this beautiful wooded glen and there was a stream and jesus loves you so much that he had just had to send you back here to suffer in this hell room and witness suffering if you open your eyes to more than you know love boom boomeranging back if you look at other people's suffering lady you you might start to notice this is a fucking realm of suffering. Loves me, yes I know, and he even tells me so. Sorry lady, you got deceived big time. Next to the stream, there was a log that was laying down on the ground. And I could see the pine cones and the pine needles. And there were these little blue flowers that were popping up through the pine needles. And I sat down on the log. And when I did, Jesus walks away. And there was a man sitting on the other end of the log. And I knew that man was God. He had this stick and he was kind of, you know, playing with the pine needles or doodling in the grass or ground or dirt or whatever. And he looked over at me and he said, what would you do if it was just me and you? And I was like, what? I, I didn't understand the question. And he smiled at me and he said, what would you do if it was just me and you? And I still didn't get the question. He smiled at me again and he stood up and he said, come with me. So I got up and we walked further into the wooded glen and there was a clearing and at the clearing i hope he used protection oh, i'm sorry i could i couldn't resist i mean it's just my imagination ran wild with me when she was when he was jesus was saying what would you do if it was just him and her and i mean it's just this whole thing ah, i don't even know what to say but uh I don't regret saying what I said, but just deal with it if you don't like it. He kind of waved his hand, and when he did that, the sky kind of opened up, and I could see the vastness of the universe. I could see the, the rainbow-colored gases and the spinning planets and the sparkling stars, but there weren't any people. There were no trees, no cars, no houses nothing it was just all of that and so i so earlier i had said mind control i said that she was massively deceived and i mentioned mind control well jesus is putting you under mind control lady because this is fucking mind control this is this is uh this is bullshit okay this is just this is a psyop so if you're seeing spinning planets, as she mentioned, and all this, you got duped. You got mind controlled by a, quote, fake Jesus. So you got to get rid of that programming before you leave here. And I don't wish harm upon anybody. But if you don't remove that programming, 
the same thing could happen to you. You believe in Jesus? Well, you're going to see Jesus and he's going he's to send you back here again. Okay? So get rid of it. And so I looked at God and I said, no, because if it's all of that and me and you, you would be tired of me after the first 10 minutes and you wouldn't like me anymore because of all of my questions and my chatter. And he threw his head back and when he did, his eyes sparkled like diamonds and his laugh was very infectious. And so I started laughing at myself and I thought, oh my word, <laughs> what a thing to say to God. You didn't tell God no. So we went back and we sat back on the log and he asked me again. He said, what would you do if it was just me and you? I want to know something, lady. What would you do if you realized that all that time you spent with Jesus or quote Jesus, that thousands and thousands of other people were dying. Where was Jesus for them? He's spending all that time with you. See what I'm saying? Oh, I know what you do. You do the mental gymnastics. Oh, well, time doesn't work that way over there. Jesus can be in so many different uh, places at one time. He could be in a million different places because he's Jesus. I mean, get real. Get real. What you were with wasn't Jesus. No parents, no husband, no children, no friends, nobody. Just me and you. Well, I still didn't know how to properly answer that question. And so there was this beautiful oak tree that was in front of me and it was probably a bazillion years old. You know, it was huge. And I noticed the detail of the bar and I noticed the roots beneath the ground and I could see the roots pulling the nutrients out of the soil and the nutrients go up through the tree and into the leaves and I could see the veins and the life-giving veins in the leaves and that the nutrients and the light provide food for the leaves and the leaves clean the air and we breathe the air and so everything is isn't that awesome that we breathe the air in heaven? You no longer have a body, but you're breathing you you're breathing the air when you don't have lungs. I mean <laughs> Oh man. Oh god. God damn. connected to and very dependent upon everything else so it doesn't we breathe the air and so everything is connected to and very dependent upon everything else so it doesn't matter how tiny god's creation is it's very very important to all of creation and i said to god and i, I don't know why i said this because i've never read the quran in my life I don't never picked it up. I've never seen it. But for some reason, I said, God, your hundredth name in the Quran is God is everywhere. God is nowhere. And God is in me. And he said, yes, that's right. And then I said, God, you made this tree. You are in this tree. So when I see this tree, I see you. He said, yes, that's right. Then I started thinking about my parents and I said, God, you made my parents. You are in my parents. So when I see my parents, I see you. And he said, yes, that's right. Well, then I said the same thing about my children. And then I started thinking about certain people who had been very cruel and had hurt, had hurt me in my life. And I said, God, there are people in this world that are very cruel and they hurt other people. I said, but you made those people. You are in those people. So when I see those people, I see you. He said, yeah, that's right. He said, now I have a question for you. 
And I thought, oh, oh my. And um, so he, he asked me, he said, when you look in the mirror, what do you see? And I kind of put my hands in my lap and kind of looked down because my answer I knew was not the right answer <laughs> that you give God. Uh, my answer normally would have been just me, nobody else, just me. That's it. But I didn't think that that was the proper thing to say. So I said, God, you made me, you are in me. So when I look in the mirror, I see you. And he was so happy. He was like, yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. And his eyes just sparkled. Uh, they were the bluest blue I had ever seen. And just got to jump in here for a moment. So the bluest blue eyes and other people have seen, quote, Jesus or God with brown eyes, just the warm, earthy. I mean, you know, that's the way it is. I'm just telling you what I've seen. And if you watch hundreds of NDEs, you're going to come across some really big uh, things that conflict with each other, that contradict and conflict. So what else was I going to say here? She just mentioned people being mean to her. What about people really doing evil here? Is that God? You didn't mention the real evil stuff, right? The unspeakable stuff, the things that I can't even say on YouTube. You realize that, lady? I can't even say these things on here. That God, too? I think I think God is, is okay with you saying, yeah, yeah, that's me, that's me, that's me, and all that stuff. As long as you come back here again, and as long as you keep getting recycled and mind wiped endlessly, they don't give a shit what you believe in. You know? You really don't. I don't want to keep repeating myself, but you're back here again, lady. That should tell you a lot. They just sparkled like diamonds when he smiled. Now, when I saw Jesus, his eyes were brown. So when I said that, God was, was letting me know, I don't make mistakes, I don't make junk, and you are not all of the things that the people on this world has told you to believe you are. I had my whole adult life, I was told I was fat, I was ugly, I was stupid, and I was believing it. And, and God was saying, no, I didn't make you that way. You are not all the things that the world tells you you are. And it was such a huge revelation in my mind that I was not all of those things, that God did not see me that way. We talked a little bit more and then these two angels came over to me and they did not have wings they were in these beautiful ornate dresses and they took me to this very calm lake it was like looking at glass and i leaned over and i looked into the water and when i did that i could see the earth below and i saw future world events I saw things happening on the earth, in different parts of the earth. I saw lots of terrible weather changes, volcanoes and, and all of that, earthquakes and tsunamis and all of that kind of thing. But I saw really dark clouds or what looked like clouds over top of different capitals of the governments in different parts of the world. And then I saw riots and people overthrowing governments and I was shown that our money system is going to collapse. In fact, the angel said that our money is not worth it and was told that eventually we would be going back to the barter system as we did years ago. And there was a lot more, but basically I, I didn't understand why I was being shown this and I didn't know what I was supposed to do about it. The angel said that these things do not have to happen that it is human collective selfishness that is causing these. I knew that message was coming. It's all humanity's fault. Even the earthquakes, and it's, it's all humanity's fault, right? That's the message they want you to spread, lady. They want you to come back here. You blame everyone. Don't you dare blame God. I mean, 
don't do what I'm doing on my channel. Don't say, you know, that I didn't design this realm. Of course, the globe, the spinning globe, and it's all the same. They, they always use that. Things to happen, and humankind can change. And if, if we change, these things will not happen. But so far, we haven't changed, and the things I saw have happened. And then after that, I was sent back to my body. And I remember waking up next to the stairs and the stairs that I was sitting on had char marks, black char marks on them where I was sitting. And the phone I was talking to on was charred black and it was across the yard. And when I got back into my body, it was the most painful thing. It was horrific, just that burning, searing, agonizing, horrible pain that was in my arm and going across my chest. I feel sorry for her for the pain that she endured, but, you know, it's an all-loving God, right? They put you back in that body to feel that. Wouldn't it have to be an all-loving God? I mean, it doesn't add up, but somehow it does to people. Even when I point it out, even when I point it out, it's almost like that one of those uh, psych experiments where they're showing people different lengths of lines. I could point out that these lines are not the same length on a screen. And people are so mind controlled. I mean, it's just, it's just incredible. It really is. So she came back here into her body to suffer. And that makes sense that God's all loving. How do you reconcile that? It's impossible, but start doing those Olympics level mental gymnastics that I know you're going to do. And I have medical documentation of, I have a right bundle branch block in my heart and I have a seizure condition from the lightning strike. So that's basically, that's it have what you have conditions why wouldn't that all loving god heal you why would he make you go through all of this what's the point you're not learning anything from that suffering what's the point what the fuck is the point of you being here back here at all so anyway i'm going to end this video um for the god believers god's all loving and he's all sadistic that make that make sense add that up somehow in your mind God's all loving, but he's okay with you suffering and feeling horrendous pain like your body's been burnt alive. You know what I'm saying? It takes you doing mental gymnastics to try to force it to make sense. You're trying to force a triangle into a circle, into a circular hole or a square, and the shape just doesn't fit. It doesn't fit, but you're trying to make it fit. All loving God, look at this realm. It doesn't fit. It doesn't fit.